Hi, and welcome to this fourth video on data classes. So this is the final video in this series, and in this video I'll talk about immutability of data classes. Data classes are by default mutable, but we'll see how to make them immutable in this video. Finally, as a bonus, I'll also compare data classes to named tuples. So both named tuples and data classes are somewhat similar, but they also have differences that I want to point out. So enough talking, let's head into the code. So first let's talk about immutability. So of course, let's import data classes. And let's make an example by trying to emulate a rectangle. So we have our data class decorator here, and then we make a class called rectangle that has two properties. The properties are just the height and the width of the rectangle. So this is height, this is probably a float, and then also the width, this is probably also a float. So as simple as this, this is just repetition. And now we can make instances. So let's call it my rect. This is an instance of the rectangle class. I just need an n here, rectangle like this. And here we have a height. Let's say that the height is one. Let's also say that the width should be, let's say two. So by default, data classes are mutable. That means that if I go to my rectangle here, and then I look at the height, then I can modify it. So I can set it to be, say, 47. So to see that this is actually valid, let's just print out my rectangle here. So here we have a rectangle class and the height is now 47. So by default, they're mutable, but we can turn them immutable. And the way to do this is to go into the decorator here and pass in an argument, which is frozen. And this is by default set to false, but we want to set it to true. So when you do this, the attributes are in a sense frozen, so you cannot mutate them. So let's see what happens now. Let's run the program again. So this time you can see that we got what's called a frozen instance error, which says I cannot assign to the field height. So now by default, all the fields have been immutable. So under the hood, what's happened is that there've been some error racing to set attribute and delete attribute methods. To be honest, it's not really very important to understand how this works, but in essence, you cannot now modify the elements. So for just the basics of making data classes immutable, this is all you really need to know, but I still want to point out some things. The first thing I want to point out is that actually this makes things slightly slower. So I've talked about previously that data classes implicitly call the typical init method of a class. So now the data class needs to do a bit of a workaround on the inside because you cannot really set anything in the init method. Again, this is not something you need to know very deeply, but just understand that if you make data classes frozen, there is a slight performance loss. But honestly, this performance difference is not really that big. The second thing, which is a bit more important, is that you should be aware of mutable data types. So say that in addition, let me just close this down. So in addition to the rectangle class, we also have a container type. So let's make another data class. Let's even make it frozen. And I want this class to be a rectangle container. So this should be a list of rectangles. If you're using Python with less than version, I think 3.9, then as I'm doing here, you can see that list isn't really included by default. What you need to do is to go into the typing module and import the list type hint. Now this works. So let's make an instance called rectangles. So this is an instance of the rectangle container class. So in here, I should pass a list. Let me just make some space here so I can pass one rectangle, which has say the height one and the width two. And then let's make another instance here where maybe the height is, let's say three and the width is five. Like this, perfectly valid, everything is fine, but you should be aware that I can still modify this list here. So what Frozen actually does is to make sure that you cannot reassign or delete an attribute. While here I can go into my rectangles, I can access the list of rectangles like this. So I can, for instance, append a new instance of rectangle. Say this has height one and width, let's say 42. This here is perfectly valid. Specifying frozen doesn't mean that you can't modify the list. I'm not reassigning any lists, I'm simply modifying it. And this works because lists are mutable in Python. So now I can print out rectangles. And I just have a small spelling error here. So this should be frozen, not frozen. Great. Let's try a final time. 
And here you can see that we get this rectangle container, but it contains three rectangles. So it is possible to modify the list. If you want to be able to say append to a container, then this is perfect. If you don't want to do that, you should rather specify an immutable container type here, like a tuple instead of a list. This is really what I have to say about immutability. Finally, I just want to make a comparison with named tuples. If you know about named tuples before, then you can definitely see some similarities between named tuples and data classes. So let me just quickly show you how to make a named tuple. So this is not a video on named tuples, so I just want to show you very quickly, but you can go into the collections module and import the named tuple. And then you can make, a, let's call this rectangle and T. So again, something simulating a rectangle, but with named tuples, you use named tuple. Here you can specify a name. Let's again, just use rectangle. And here you can specify, for instance, one way to do this is to specify just a list of height and width. And now once you have this, you can make instances. So you can say my rect and t, this is an instance of this rectangle and t named tuple. So let's make this. And here you can pass in, for instance, that you want height one and width two. This here is strangely similar to the instance now here that we've made with my rect. So let's clear this up. So both data types, meaning both data classes and named tuples, work as a kind of a simplified object. So you can access the attributes here also as like my rect and t dot height or dot width, same as with data classes. And you don't have to write all this boilerplate code that you do when defining classes. Named tuples also have like an as dict method to transform them to dictionaries. We saw previously in the series that data classes had that too. So what are actually the differences? Well, there are differences in how you should use them. Named tuples, they inherit from tuples and tuples are implemented in C. So that means that you get really fast access time and you also get fast comparison times and so on. And actually named tuples are a bit more simplistic than data classes. Name tuples are immutable by default, while data classes you have to make immutable with this frozen keyword. On the other hand, if you have data classes, then you now have type support as we've seen. So you can define here that height should be a float, width should be a float and so on. Additionally, they are classes in a traditional sense. You can do class-based things like for instance, inheritance. So what I would say is the big difference is that if you want something really, really lightweight, then you should use named tuples. So if you don't need inheritance, you don't care about type pins, you only want to represent fields with names and have fast access times, then this is perfect. However, if you want something slightly more, then data classes are perfect. So it really depends on the application. Actually, to be honest with this example, meaning the rectangle, I would probably use a named tuple because it's so simple. But with more complicated examples, data classes definitely offer a very competent alternative to named tuples. In the future, I'll make a video on named tuples and also other containers in the collections module. So this is the end of this four video series on data classes. I hope you learned a lot. I definitely learned a few new things. So if you like the content we're providing here, then like, subscribe, and I'll see you again in a future video. Thanks and have a nice day.